Good evening. It's back to the drawing board because I have reached a point where to continue building my water bike I need more materials and also, also I have to figure out the next part because I don't know how to do it yet. So today on the good old graph paper I'm going to be going over how to do the paddle wheel for the back wheel. I've thought of two different options that I think will be pretty viable. Um, one involves leaving a bicycle wheel more intact, the other involves pretty much completely rebuilding it. Um, but what I need to find, and I, I've already had several family members and friends offer me this, is a uh, just a back wheel from a bike that has the little tiny sprocket on it. Um, for free and like I said I've already had a few offers so I'll have that the difference in the two ideas though involve different size tires one design it doesn't matter what size the other design would be like a children's tire but for that all to make sense I have to go to the graph paper here we are at the graph paper this is my bicycle that I'm going to be turning into a wire bike so what I'm working on now is turning this back wheel into a paddle wheel. Every, every bicycle has a certain amount of clearance between this bolt right here and the sprocket to the edge of the tire and then right here there's always seems like a little crossbar that goes between one side and the other. So I have from here to here to work with to make a paddle wheel. So let's go to option number one. This is option number one. It's pretty cool because it kind of looks like a pirate ship wheel. Steering wheel. That was not intentional. So the idea for this one is, like I said, so this would be the rear sprocket, that little tiny thing that the chain goes on, the chain goes around and goes out to the where you pedal. So what I have to work with is from right here, the center of the wheel, to that little crossbar that ends up being out here. And... So, my, so the normal size wheel that's on the bike currently goes from here to about the edge of these paddles. A normal, a normal wheel does. Now what this is designed to be is like a children's bicycle wheel. So if you can imagine, a children's bicycle wheel is much smaller. So it would go from here, and then the inside of the rim would end here, and then the tire would be like right here and go all the way around. So if you can imagine... This is essentially a children's bicycle wheel from here to here. I've taken off the rubber wheel part that is normally here and I've replaced it with paddles all the way around. And the idea behind this one is that the difference in size between a children's bicycle wheel from here to here and an adult bicycle wheel from here to here is that I use that difference and I make it into paddles. The advantages to this design are that I can have way more paddles because um, the circumference of the circle is bigger, so I have more area to work with. Um, the disadvantage, what, or some of the disadvantages are that these paddles are really short, and the reason that that is important is because for this one to be really efficient, I need the water level to be like right here. So that each time the paddles are going down, they're only just barely dipping in the water. And But since I can't test my design, it could be that my pontoons fill full of water and I sink deeper, and then the water line is like all the way up here. That would make it really inefficient. It would have the most efficient would be right here. And I just have no idea where how deep I'm going to sit in the water. So it's hard to tell how efficient this design would be. Um, this also, another advantage to this is that when I make my paddles, I can make them all bigger and so I can just screw them in like this into the, the rim of the bike. And so that makes the production of it significantly easier. And if you remember what I'm making these paddles out of, 
is recycled milk jugs. I'm going to melt them down and make forms. And I'm going to essentially pour the melted plastic into those forms and let it harden. And they'll be in, the, in these shapes, in paddle shapes. So that's the, def that's the first design. That, like I said, that involves a children's bicycle wheel. I just take off the tire and make these really short paddles. And now let's compare this one with design number two. All right, design number two is different in many ways. So one of the ways that this is different is that, as you can see, I've taken off every bit of the wheel except for the sprocket and the bolt that attaches it to the bike. Um, so this one, it doesn't matter if I use an adult bicycle wheel or a or children's bicycle wheel because all I need is the center part and those are pretty much the same on an adult versus a children's. So I strip everything off. I keep just the center bit of the hardware, just, just the sprocket, the bolt, and everything that goes along with that. And I make my paddles attach directly to that. And so they, in that, in, if I use this design, my paddles are able to be significantly longer, almost three times the, the length. Which means that this doesn't, this design, it doesn't really matter how far the bike sits in the water. I mean, well, it still does. I wouldn't obviously want to be all the way up here, but the water could be right here, and this would work. The water could be right here, and this would work. Um, so that gives me a lot more play in how far I sit in the water for this one to, to be efficient. The cons are that it's hard to tell because of how big this looks, but this is actually really small, so the diameter of this circle is only like um, three and a half inches wide. That doesn't give me much room to attach the paddles to the sprocket and everything. So I, I don't know how I would do it. I don't know if I'd have to make one giant form in the shape of this whole thing and form it directly to the sprocket itself. I, I don't know. I, I'll have to climb that mountain when I get there, but um, pretty much the only advantage to this one is is that it doesn't matter how far my bike sits in the water for it to work. So there are probably other designs I could have come up with, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with one of those two. And I don't know how exactly I'm going to shape the paddles yet because I need to do some research on uh, the most efficient shape of, of paddles for a paddle wheel. So I'll look into that. We still don't have internet. It's been gone for almost a solid week. My wife called today and they said it's out in the area for our provider, so... We're just waiting on that to come back. And so I'm going to go, I'll, I'll get a tire tomorrow, or a back wheel, so that I can, um, you know, start cannibalizing it if I need to. And the other things I need to get, though, are I need to get a toaster oven and an old blender. Um, hopefully for free from people. doesn't matter what shape they're in because... I'm going to be using them to shred milk jugs and melt milk jugs. <laughs> so they could be the nastiest appliances on earth and they would serve me well. But I need to find those so that I can um, start experimenting with the, the melted milk jugs. In fact, the best case scenario would be for me tomorrow to get a children's bicycle wheel and an adult's bicycle wheel so that I can see exactly how much difference there is in the two and, and how much you know, which design would work better. This part, it's getting, this part is getting exciting. It, it's scaring me because I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never, like, this will be totally experimenting for me. <laughs> I've never, I've never tried melting milk jugs down before. I've never tried forming them into anything. I've never, I've just never done any of this. So I'm pretty excited for it. I'm nervous and I'm scared that it's not going to work right, but that's just part of the fun. But anyway, tune back in tomorrow for... Bicycle wheel cannibalization.